0.6 to 0.95 for various valve tray caps. Hydraulic tray pressure drop. The weight of liquid on a tray is created by the wear height plus the crest height. We have defined in previous video that the crest is height in inches of clear liquid. As crest height equals 0.4, GPM divided by inch outlet wear length, carat 0.67. The actual height of fluid overflowing the weir is quite a bit greater than we calculate with this formula. The reason is that the fluid overflowing the weir is not clear liquid, but aerated liquid, that is, foam. The fluid on the tray deck, below the top of the weir, is also foam. This reduces the effective weight of the liquid on the tray due to aeration. To summarize, the weight of liquid on the tray, called the hydraulic tray pressure drop, which is Increment P, hydraulic, equals AF times WH plus 0.4, GPM divided by inch outlet wear length, carat 0.67. Where increment P, hydraulic, equals hydraulic tray pressure drop, in inches of clear liquid. WH equals wear height, in inches. AF equals aeration factor. GPM equals gallons, US, per minute. The aeration factor AF is the relative density of the foam to the density of the clear liquid. It is a combination of complex factors, but is typically 0.5. Calculated total tray pressure drop. The sum of the dry tray pressure drop plus the hydraulic tray pressure drop equals the total tray pressure drop. Increment P total equals increment P dry plus increment P hydraulic expressed in inches of clear liquid. When the dry tray pressure drop is significantly less than the hydraulic tray pressure drop, the tray will start to leak or weep and tray efficiency will be adversely affected. When the dry tray pressure drop is significantly greater than the hydraulic tray pressure drop, the liquid on the tray can blow off the tray deck and tray efficiency will be adversely affected. For a tray to function reasonably close to its best efficiency point, the dry tray pressure drop must be roughly equal, plus or minus 50%, to the hydraulic tray pressure drop. DP dry equals DP hydraulic. This concept is the basis for tray design for perforated tray decks. While various valve tray vendors maintain that this rule does not hold for their equipment, it is the industrial experience that valve trays leak just as badly as do sieve trays at low vapor hole velocities. To summarize, increment P total equals KDV divided by DLVG squared plus AF times WH plus 0.4 GPM per inch outlet wear length, carat 0.67. Other causes of tray inefficiencies. Out of level trays. When trays weep, efficiency may not be significantly reduced. After all, the dripping liquid will still come into good contact with the upflowing vapor. But this statement would be valid only if the tray decks were absolutely level. And in the real world, especially in large, greater than 6 feet, diameter columns, there is no such thing as a level tray. In this picture, the edge view of a tray that is 2 inches out of level. As illustrated, liquid accumulates on the low side of this tray. Vapor, taking the path of least resistance, preferentially bubbles up through the high side of the tray deck. To prevent liquid from leaking through the low side of the tray, the dry tray pressure drop must equal or exceed the sum of the weight of the aerated liquid retained on the tray by the weir plus the crest height of liquid over the weir plus the 2 inch out of levelness of the tray deck. Once the weight of liquid on one portion, the lowest area of a tray deck exceeds the dry tray pressure drop, the hydraulic balance of the entire tray is ruined. Vapor flow through the low area of the tray deck ceases. The aeration of the liquid retained by the weir on the low area of the tray deck stops, and hence the hydraulic tray pressure drop in
were difficult to install because of their weight. Have about 15% less capacity because when vapor escapes from the slots on the bubble cap, it is moving in a horizontal direction. The vapor flow must turn 90 degrees. This change of direction promotes entrainment and, hence, jet flooding. They are more expensive to purchase. They are more difficult to clean. But in the natural gas fields, where modern design techniques have been slow to penetrate, bubble cap trays are still widely employed to dehydrate and sweeten natural gas in remote locations. Distillation tower turned down. The problem we have been discussing is loss of tray efficiency due to low vapor velocity, is commonly called turn down. It is the opposite of flooding, which is indicated by loss of tray efficiency at high vapor velocity. To discriminate between flooding and weeping trays, we measure the tower pressure drop. If the pressure drop per tray, expressed in inches of liquid, is more than three times the wear height, then the pore fractionation is due to flooding. If the pressure drop per tray is less than the height of the weir, then poor fractionation is due to weeping or dumping. One way to stop trays from leaking or weeping is to increase the reflux rate. If the rev oiler is on automatic temperature control, increasing the reflux flow must result in increased rev oiler duty. This will increase the vapor flow through the trays and the dry tray pressure drop. The higher dry tray pressure drop may then stop tray deck leakage. The net effect is that the higher reflux rate restores the tray efficiency. However, the largest operating cost for many process units is the energy supply to the rev oilers. We should therefore avoid high reflux rates and try to achieve the best efficiency point for distillation tower trays at a minimum vapor flow. This is best done by designing and installing the tray decks and outlet weirs as level as possible. Damaged tray decks should not be reused unless they can be restored to their proper state of levelness, which is difficult, if not impossible. New High Capacity Tray All vendors now market a high capacity tray. These trays have a 5 to 15% capacity advantage over conventional trays. Basically, the idea behind these high capacity trays is the same. The area underneath the down comber is converted to bubble area. This increase in area devoted to vapor flow reduces the percent of jet flood. But what keeps vapor from blowing up the down comber? What prevents loss of the down comber seal? If the down comber seal is lost, surely the down comber will back up and flood the upper trays of the column. The design of this type of tray is the Norpro high capacity tray shown in picture. The head loss through the orifice holes in the downcomber seal plate shown is sufficiently high to prevent loss of the downcomber seal. These trays flood rather easily when their design downcomber liquid rates are exceeded. However, when operated at design downcomber liquid rates, they perform very well indeed and have shown quite a high vapor handling capacity as compared to conventional trays. The downcomber seal plate shown in this picture is an example of a dynamic downcomber seal. The Koplich nitray also uses a dynamic down comber seal to increase vapor handling capacity. All trays with a dynamic down comber seal suffer from two disadvantages. Loss of flexibility in that the liquid rates cannot be varied over too great a range without either flooding or unsealing the down comers. Tray installation complexity is always increased, sometimes with terrible consequences. For these reasons, high capacity trays using dynamic down comber seals are best avoided on new columns. They should be reserved for use on retrofit tower expansion projects. Calculating tray efficiency. The viewer with a chemical engineering background will observe that I've neglected the calculation of tray efficiency. There are three methods available.